speaking about emptiness and uh, about how the Buddha uh, came uh, to the understanding of emptiness. Yes. And the way he came about it was, if I'm not mistaken, doctor was saying meditation. Yes. So would it be too early for us to go into the mindfulness or would doctor no, like to speak right. out less? So if doctor could now share with us on mindfulness and meditation, yes. because uh, to my, to just get the ball rolling, to, to any mind, I think, first of all, when you think about being mindful, is it being mindful in a sense that, okay, I'm right now in Shualing, uh, I'm with Robert Thurman, and two of us are in conversation, right. and uh, the camera is rolling. <laughs> is, is that mindfulness, or is there more to it in the Buddhism? Mindfulness is being aware of all kinds of small details, yes, eventually. Yeah. But um, what they mean by smriti, actually, the actual word, demba, means actually memory. Actually, it's what it means. And uh, its basic meaning is memory. And so it's like taking the energy of memory and putting into remembering where you are now. It's really something like that. But let's, let's look at it more broadly. Now, the Four Noble Truths, right? We've, we haven't looked at them systematically in this program, yeah. but, if, but we've, we've sort of touched on them very well. That is, if you think you're the separate essential thing in the universe, the universe will disagree and everything you do will be some element of suffering in it. Even your pleasures will be temporary, and so they'll be called the suffering of change, right? The cause of that, then you look to diagnose the cause of that, and the cause of that is that feeling of yourself as separate, and your wrong feeling that you're an absolutely different thing, and the universe, everything else is absolutely different from you, and therefore it's very problematic how to relate to it. And so, therefore, th the, but the prognosis of, edu of the educational system or the therapeutical system, or the medical system, whatever you want to call it, the spiritual system, is that you can free yourself from that delusion about your separateness and your absoluteness. And when you do, you will be really happy, and you'll be in nirvana. That's the, th that's the third noble truth, which, of course, is Buddha's great discovery. But then the fourth noble truth is, just like the second noble truth, is the cause of the first noble truth. The fourth noble truth is the cause of the third noble truth. So the fourth one is the therapy or the education system or the, or the actual yoga, the, the, the method by where you, where, you, where you achieve that nirvana. You achieve the result of being free from suffering. So first branch of that is realistic worldview. People call it usually right view and right this and that. But I, right and wrong are like, you know, so it's sort of fit within a, a rule book, you know. This is right according to rule, that's wrong. Whereas I like realistic because it means connected to reality of your life. You know? So realistic worldview, and we've discussed that. And it's basically the rea es essence of the realistic worldview is understanding relativity and understanding your connection and your relatedness to the world. That's your realistic worldview. It isn't believing that there's Buddha. It isn't believing there's former and future life. It isn't believing something that you might think be, would be non-rational. It's the rational belief that everything you can possibly know and everything you can possibly be is interrelated to a causal process. You know that famous verse, Om Ye Dharma Hetu Prabhava. You know, Chunem Tamje Gyule Jung. Right? You know that famous verse. So Buddha was discovery of causation, meaning relativity. That's another way of saying relativity, you know. And um, so that's realistic worldview. Then based on that realistic worldview of your total connection to everything, you have a realistic motivation about the purpose of your life. If I'm living, if, if I'm in karmic biology and I'm connected to everything and everything I do has an effect on me in the future, then I better do the right thinking because I'm going to do and uh, behave in a realistic manner because that's going to determine the quality of my existence in the future of this life and in many future lives. So it's very important. My seeking of happiness is my motivation and the method of how to do it is, is, my, is how I put that into practice. Then the methods, I don't lie, I have a realistic livelihood, and I have realistic actions, and I make realistic efforts. So there's four things that have to do with efforts, with uh, my action, you know, and, and ethical type of thing, ethical and action and speech and all this. Then the last two things, you know, that's up to six, right? Speech, action, uh, livelihood, and, you know, like livelihood and effort or creativity. I, call, I like to translate it. Zunju is creativity, because it isn't any kind of effort. It's effort in positive evolutionary action. Then the last two things, mindfulness is one, and samadhi is the second. Those are the seventh and eighth branch. 
And it's very important that samadhi is the last one, not the first one. And realistic worldview is the first one, not the last one. Because if you go into samadhi with an unrealistic worldview, with lokta, what will happen is your concentration will focus on materialism or on some absolute thing about your soul or about your absolute false, you know, wrong idea about reality, and you'll become more deluded, actually. The meditation will intensify your delusion. So first you have to correct, you have to develop the targeting. It's like, meditation is like when you pull the bow back and release the arrow, and it sends that arrow very powerfully. But realistic worldview is aiming the arrow. Otherwise, if you just go, the arrow, you'll kill people who are drinking beer. They're drinking red panda over in the audience, and you'll, they, they'll all die. You have to aim very carefully before you pull the, pull the arrow back and release it. You know? And the releasing of it is the, is the combination of mindfulness and samadhi. Now, mindfulness and concentration. Now, the mindfulness part is where you become introspective and you start to look into the way your mind works. And it's really a very powerful, important thing to do. I always like to say the person who has no mindfulness practice, who never tried that, and who just thinks whatever they think, and when some thought comes up in their mind, it just controls what they do and how they see. They are like a person doomed to watch one television station forever without a clicker. They cannot mute the commercial, they cannot turn it off, and they cannot switch channels when it's a really boring program. It's whatever, because they think they are the program. So what it is is mindfulness means you look and see in your mind. And you know, you can start by counting your breath one to ten, you know. Just breathing, counting one to ten. And when you try to count to ten and not think of anything else, what will immediately happen is you will start thinking of other things. <laughs> and when you do, you will forget to count to four. You'll be three, but then at four you're thinking about yesterday or tomorrow. Your dremba, your memory, is taking you to remember some previous thing. Or, in a way, remember something you're worried about that you're fantasizing about, anticipating in the future. And so it, you'll go off on a train of thought. And your awareness will completely move away from your counting. And then the trick is, mindfulness trick is, to notice that's happened and then to dismount from that train of thought, to jump off the train and come back to counting, go back to one, two, three, four, et cetera. And, and you could use any other thing. You don't, counting is just a very convenient one because we do breathe all the time. You know? And so you could say, oh, money, pay me home, and your mind will wander off that. You come back to, oh, money, pay me home. You don't have to only do counting, but that's, counting is considered very basic. When the mind yeah. wanders, okay, I'm counting till one till 10. And with my feeble attempts at it, once you remember that, okay, I've wandered, and then you come back to, again, one to 10. Yeah. But then there is a part of you which feels that, oh, this